Hey guys, Tisha here, and we're back for season eight, our first review. I'm going to start off by saying there's something missing because in the preview where they show like a recap of the things from season seven, they show Maddie graduating, and we obviously did not see that because I didn't review it. So I went on a, diff a few different apps and episodes are missing from different seasons and things are out of order as far as they're labeled and I thought it was just me seeing this but I noticed in my previous recap that Tulips and Cats had mentioned that she noticed the same thing too so I'm gonna say that I'm sorry for what I missed but we're gonna keep on going based on what was on the um the HBO app because Philo was even worse. Like they're missing so many different episodes. I was like, okay, there's no way. So I'm gonna tell you all that this episode pissed me off a lot because we now know that a lot of it was lies. I don't like the fact that we're being told this story about Dayton's eye and him needing surgery when we know that the family wasn't honest about what happened to his eye. For those of you who cannot remember, um, Dayton's eye was severely damaged in an accident that happened. They're going to talk about it further down in the show, but Robin has a, a point of saying with friends when we know now that it wasn't with just friends, it was with Cody. It was told to us that this incident happened while he was out of town, alluding to the fact that he was possibly with his bio father's side of the family when now we know because of what McKelty said on her Patreon that it actually happened with Cody. She said that Dayton was on ATVs. He was riding them by himself. Cody wasn't paying attention to him. He ran into a fence, severely hurt his eye, and Hunter was the one who found him. OK, so take a lot of this episode with a grain of salt because we're not being told the truth. Robin and Cody are meeting with Dayton to talk to him about his upcoming surgery with the plastic surgeon. Robin lies and says that around two years ago, Dayton was out of town with some friends and he got into an ATV accident by friends. As I said earlier, she means Cody and some siblings and some friends. But we know that Robin is great at rewriting things and making it seem like something else happened. So if you're going to tell us this story, then I feel like they should have told us the truth. The fact that they're able, because of their friend Tim and whoever else, whatever other production that they're close to, to get away with these type of lies bothers me. Because you've put out this false narrative where you have all these people thinking something traumatic happened when he was under the care of friends and he was under the care of the bird's husband. He had surgery where they cleaned out all the debris, stitched his face, and repaired his eyelid to his hairline. Now, previously we were told that they didn't want to show all that at the time because he was embarrassed and things of that nature. But here you are showing us the pictures, okay? Cody says it was really traumatic and we hear about how brave he was and how throughout the whole thing he didn't share a, shed a tear. They're showing us all these pictures and I couldn't help but notice that while her child is laying there on the bed, Robin is posing for this picture holding his hand. I don't get it. The last thing that I'm worried about while my child is on a, a hospital bed with all type of stitches and gone through such a traumatic thing is that is worrying about posing, taking a picture with him. Just my personal thoughts. Um, the goal now is to repair his eyelid because from the previous surgery that he had, they were unable to fix the droop. So his eye, instead of them being level like this, one is down like this. So they want to have him where they're like this. Um, Dayton is nervous about the surgery. During the procedure, he will not be completely put to sleep because of his age. Now, Cody gives us this whole spill about how because he has Asperger's um, and they think that he can handle it because he's really, really good at focusing in that they're going to do this. But they don't normally do this for the, the kids his age and all these other things. I'm like, okay, Cody, you're putting 20 on 10. They're having him awake because they need to see him during different periods. Open and close that eye so they can make sure that they're not causing more damage and making it worse than it already appears. So that whole spill is like, okay, just another reason to just sit here and, and spill. 
Um, I don't believe anything that the bird and bald eagle are telling us right now because they both are liars. As I said, the Ashburgers is going to help him do this. Um, they're telling him all these different steps and Robin's sitting there holding his eye and doing all this other stuff, just being extra. And I'm sure that the doctor already had this whole talk with Dayton and that the feather crew here is just filming and making a moment and a time to show what happened to, D to Dayton, but they're not being honest with us. So I just found myself being really annoyed. Robin hopes that this will help. She's fearful uh, that it will make it worse. And she just wants it to benefit him as any parent in this situation would. We then see McKelty who is meeting David Tupaz. He's a designer in Las Vegas and she's having a meeting with him because she wants to have an internship with him. We see her getting her portfolio ready and she says she's ready for the, the interview. Cody says, He's concerned about her being in the fashion industry because the fashion industry is highly sexualized. Not all aspects are like that, but of course, Cody is going to make this about his opinions and those are the only things that carries weight. She has a passion for it, so he doesn't want to discourage her with his moral compass, but there are certain things that he desires. He said that the high fashion thing really consist of scantily clad women. And I just want to know what he really knows about flat fashion. We see Cody wear the same plaid shirts, the same flannel shirts, and a pair of jeans, but he's sitting here trying to convince us that he knows about fashion. He believes that McKelty will usher in a new type of fashion and uh, bring class back to the industry. McKelty is going to bring class back to the industry because according to Cody, it's so classless. <laughs> he said that if she can't do that, that her moral compass will help her to pick some other career path. It just sounds crazy. Like I wonder sometimes if uh, the bald eagle really listens to what comes out of his mouth because he's putting his desires on his, his daughter when she wants to design clothing. Why are we talking so much about uh, the way that the, the clothes looks and all this? If she's designing it, then it's not gonna be scantily clad. McKelty walks into David's space and she is immediately impressed with his talent. Meanwhile, you have Cody and confessional um, being annoying, talking about how people will try to push the threshold of their values. And I just want him to shut up and just enjoy being in the space. Every moment has to be about Cody. And this is supposed to be about McKelty. And we're hearing more from Cody about this experience than we are McKelty. McKelty says that David is posh and his designs are glamorous, and he is bringing back sophistication. Cody says that he is bored out of his mind while they're sitting here doing this, and he makes ignorant statements that um, he's a man and he doesn't get the fashion industry. Him being a man has nothing to do with it. Clearly, he knows nothing about fashion because there are tons of males dominating the fashion industry. Like, come on, Cody. He brings McKelty to see the runway that he has built in his space, talks about how he's the only one who has something like this and looks at her portfolio. Um, Christine says she isn't nervous, but Cody sounds nervous. We see David open up the portfolio. He asks is this what she really wants to do. He said that I asked that because a lot of them will come in here thinking that they're designers in their mind, but they're not designers here. He pointed to his heart. McKelty responds and says, this is what I love to do. And this is my complete full passion. He said, perfect. That's what I wanted to hear. He says, while he's looking at her different designs, that her designs are very futuristic, but they can be done. Cody isn't listening because he says he wants to know like if she sucks or not. He didn't tell her her stuff sucks. He said her stuff is futuristic, that he could see it on shows and he could see it on like stages and things of that nature. So obviously he likes something about what he's seeing. Um, David is going over everything with her. He lets her know that if she is selected, this is going to be a lot of work, but she will learn a lot. McKelty says her dad doesn't like that she wants to do this because of how fashion is crude, but he knows that she'll be able to make it positive. 
Okay, so we see Robin and Cody going to a second hand store where they meet this lesbian polygamist. They feel like their products will go well in this store because it's their price range. It's in their price range, um, the stores at least. They bring in their display and the lady says it's very tiny, but she loves it. She says the only thing that's missing is her picture on the Sister Wives Closet logo. Um, Cody says he's turning down wives and their daughters. She tells him, you're not who I want to marry. Cody says that she's friendly and she's safe, but they don't want to ask her too many questions because they don't want to pry. The owner says that as far as their belief system is concerned, that it doesn't matter to her. She's a lesbian polygamist. She has a few wives of her own and she's very happy. Robin says, I'm curious about what you think about our product being in your stores and how people will respond like if this will deter a buyer. To me, it doesn't even make sense that Robin is asking this question because it's been over two years since they've been selling these products and having that same exact picture up there. So why is this something that you're concerned about now? From the very beginning, a lot of the wives said that they did not want it to be linked to them being polygamous, that they didn't really know if they liked the name Sister Wives Closet. And now she's over here acting like she's concerned about having polygamy attached to it. Because I guess trying to justify reasons why it's not really selling. Cody said they haven't had any re retailers yet say that anyone has made any um, types of comments like that about how they don't want to buy the merchandise because they're polygamous. Um, but they like to know if someone does. They sound stupid asking that question, if you ask me. Um, Cody said that this was initially a dream of Robin's. And now Christine and Mary are heavily involved. For Robin, it's about the art. But for Cody, it's about making money. We then see that they had a meeting a week earlier suggesting for them to buy things from the other companies and put them on their website. Robin just wants it to be their design. She doesn't want to have other people's designs because she feels like it alters the integrity. Whereas Janelle says, we've tried that already and it's not working. Robin feels like selling someone else's product is like them selling out. But I still feel like in a way it shouldn't really matter because it's not like Robin is handcrafting these designs by herself. She draws a picture that a little kindergartner would draw and she submits it to the, the retailer, to the actual jeweler, and they design it. So is it really bad if you sell other people's products? No. And y'all products are trash, so it would have been better if you got <laughs> It's the next day for surgery and Robin is nervous, unlike what Cody did with Truly. Cody is gonna be there for this entire process. Cody could barely be there for Christine when her child was sick and Christine rushed her to the emergency room and then was told to, to bring her in and they put all those wires and everything else. He was, in, he was asleep. But here, he can be there for this process for Dayton. We also find out that it's Father's Day and they're going to be having a celebration for Maddie because she is leaving to go to uh, her college. I think it is USU. Um, Cody talks about how Robin is very nervous, but for him, he's already been over the edge because Madison had an emergency appendectomy at 11 and and truly was at the hospital for a long time and that was a close call and he's uh, already been on the edge according to his family size like it's a guarantee to know that accidents are going to happen okay the only accident that happened was what happened to Dayton the other things that happened were other health emergencies that may not have necessarily been predictable. So to me, Cody, you kind of lost me with that. I get that he's trying to act like this is, you know, these things happen and all of those things. But either way, whether it's planned or not, whether it's intentional or not, if something happens to your child, any parent worth their, their, any good parent would be concerned about their child. So Cody calls. Um, Christine lets them know that they're in the recovery room. The surgery was successful and Dayton is all smiles. So like I said, he was there the entire time with Robin. 
Um, they're excited to see his eyes open and he's looking at him. Even though he just had surgery, Robin wants to make sure that he can hang out with the family. The family that Robin has recently told us didn't care about her kids and treated them so badly has now come over after all of this. They're waiting on Dayton to walk in the room. As he walks in the room, they're clapping and they're telling him how good he looks and all that other stuff. She says that even though he doesn't like having attention on him, he enjoys having the family there, which once again reiterates the fact that he enjoyed being around the family. It helps him feel like he is loved. You see all the kids and parents asking him questions, but he was still a little under anesthesia. So he seemed a little loopy and he's only going to remember so much. They talk about his scar and how cool it is. And Cody says it won't affect his uh, pretty boy face. And you see him looking later on in the mirror and how excited he is about being able to have his eye open and not like this. I'm not trying to be funny, but that's what it looked like. Like you can barely see his pupil the way that um, his eye looked previously. Um, so Maddie is leaving Dayton's home from surgery. And Father's Day is all being combined. So Maddie leaving, Dayton being home, and Cody's Father's Day all being combined into one party. Cody is partied out according to him. They talk about the parties and all the other stuff and how it's just better to all do it in one. Me personally, I don't think that it was fair to Maddie to have to combine her going away party, but Maddie didn't seem bothered. So it's the next day. Maddie is moving. They're supposed to be leaving at eight, but she's still moving things. Janelle says she always um, is home, so she can't imagine what it's going to be like not having her there. And she could feel how excited Maddie is to leave. Maddie has a lot of stuff and it looks like it's not really going to fit in the car. They can't force things in that type of car because of how it goes down. And I don't understand why they didn't take multiple vehicles so the ride wouldn't be so tight. But apparently they just wanted to drive in the one car, which looked like it was Janelle's car. Meanwhile, Cody is frustrated with Janelle. He's trying to wrap up business before they leave. We hear again how grouchy, how grouchy Maddie was before um, when they first moved there and how over time things changed, but they always knew that she was going to be going back to Utah as soon as she she could. So she's going to Utah State University a week after graduation because she got a job offer out there. I still am mad that we did not get to see the graduation. Since we saw the other ones, why couldn't we see hers? Cody doesn't like how far she's going. He feels like his, he's it's too far. <laughs> Y'all, sorry. I knew it was coming. I could feel the little tickle tickle in my nose. Um, I don't understand why it was such a big deal that Maddie was going to Utah because I thought Leon was in that area too. How far apart were their colleges from one another? Her dorm room is a student apartment, so she has a kitchen and a bathroom in her own private room. By the reaction of the parents, it's clear that they did not tour the facility with her because they're so surprised by what her living looks, her living area looks like. Cody feels like it's all happening so soon and he wishes he would have took more advantage of the time he had with her and enjoy the moment with her more. He said that he's been really busy, so he hasn't got a chance to talk with her. So he wants to sit down for her to spill her guts. My thing is, you had ample opportunity to sit down and talk with her. It's a little too late for him to now sit down and try to do that. But maybe he was too busy with uh, his other family. Maybe he was too busy with the, the birds sitting on that perch. And he didn't have time for the little chickens to come. Chickens. Birdies. The little baby birds. <laughs> to come what are baby birds called anyways um he gives her a pep talk about boys and how they get fresh and if they do poke them in the eye and make sure their eyes are on your fingers uh he thinks that she's safe but he wants her to protect herself janelle says be safe follow the campus rules janelle says she has big plans um, as far as maddie is concerned like maddie wants to do a lot of things but she's worried that she's gonna find some guy um before the semester's out and she's gonna stop doing what she wants because of this guy. Now, I don't remember the timeline, but we do know that she did eventually find a guy and she didn't finish college. Maddie is a stay-at-home mom. She is working, but she's a stay-at-home mom. So she didn't complete college. Excuse me. Cody says, your body belongs to you, doesn't belong to any man, even if you're married to him. 
you have your own say so so always protect yourself janelle says you're still a little girl and that she'll be there so fast if something happens and maddie needs her madison wants them to leave so she can be alone and put her stuff together I don't know what kind of way she packed. Things are all over the place. It looks really messy to me, but she is making her bed and getting settled. Cody says he's over there wanting her to experience college um, enough to eventually miss him enough to want to come and have a connection with him. What in the world? It just makes no sense. I feel like this episode showed us a whole bunch of things. It showed us how much he's there for Robin's children. And it shows us now he, how he neglects some of his others. You knew that your child was leaving and going away to college. And you're sitting here and you're telling us that you wish that you had more time with her when you already knew that this was going to be her last year and that she was going to be leaving. We knew very early on that Maddie got an acceptance, a full ride to this university. And here you are saying you shoulda, woulda, couldas. Not only that, I want to know, put it down in the comments if you remember, how do they pay for Dayton's surgery? Because Christine had to pay for Isabel. So how was Dayton's paid for? Did that come out of the community pot or was that something that both Robin and Cody paid for? Or was that something that came from out of the sister wives closet since Mary said later on that she never got paid from it? I, I just want to know. If you guys know, let me know. Overall, this episode annoyed me. And I feel like if I remember correctly, this season is going to annoy me. There's going to be some bits and pieces here where we start to see more and more how Christine and Cody are falling apart. And Mary is in her own little ways too. But Mary is backing away and slowly going to go down that dangerous slope that we won't see for a few more seasons. But it's just, it's the mess is coming. If you have not already, please like the video, please comment, and please subscribe. We are on the road to a thousand and I am getting closer and closer with each video. Literally, I feel like every time I put out a video, there is at least one or two people that subscribe. So thank you guys for spreading the word. Thank you for sharing my videos. I've seen that said under the comments. Thank you for mentioning me and for thinking of me. I've said it before. There are tons, literally, of content creators out here that are giving so much more than I am, but you still come back and you support me. And it means so very much to me. Until next time.